Hey, handsome. Why don't you hop on in and uh, help me soap up? Careful, it's slippery. That sounds awesome, man. I'm all set to get wet. I hope you're ready for action. Look out for that soap, dude. My leg! My leg! This procedurette describes a technique I've used on a few particular patients who've come in with respiratory compromise and a femur or hip fracture. In these cases, it's been tough to give them enough narcotic pain control without also compromising their airway. Boring! While this technique has worked great for me in these cases, Please keep in mind that I'm just some guy from the internet, and you really should think about this stuff yourself and not just trust me, because if you do that, you're probably eventually going to kill someone or make their leg fall off, and that would make you a stupid and bad doctor. Think before you act. It's pretty easy to image the femur using ultrasound. Here you can see the cortex of the femur right there, that bright white arc, and under it, the acoustic shadowing. And it's also pretty easy to look at the femur in the long axis like this. Here again is the cortex, that bright white line there. And you can even get a pretty good view of the hip. Here is the head of the femur and here is the neck right here. It's all really easy, but how is it useful? Well, it's just as easy to pick up a fracture using ultrasound. Here is a normal ultrasound cross-section of a femur, but a fracture looks more like this, where there's an overlap of two different sections of bone by the fracture site. You can see two different hyperechoic sections of bone cortex and two acoustic shadows. So how can you use this to numb up a bad fracture like this one without narcotics? Well, in the cases I've treated, I've drawn up an appropriate amount of 1% lidocaine without epi, and then drawn up some additional saline into the syringe for more volume. And then I've attached a spinal needle to the syringe to give me enough length to reach the fracture site, and I prep and drape the patient sterilely. Give me a break here. I know I'm not using sterile technique. I'm doing this right before my shift in my underwear with what I've got. Once you can image the fracture site, you're basically aiming to place your needle right about there. You draw back on your needle and then inject. So why do I like this technique? Well, for one thing, I find it technically much easier than a femoral nerve block or a fascia iliaca block, especially on an obese patient. It also works very quickly. The patient gets relief almost right away. Hi, what's your name? I also like it because it seems to mostly numb up the fractured area as opposed to the entire lower extremity like you get with a nerve block, which can be a good thing because if you're evaluating a patient for compartment syndrome or things like that, you don't want their whole leg completely insensate. You just want to block the pain right where it is. What are some concerns of this technique? Well, a few people have said, ooh, what about introducing infection? And, you know, that's always a risk. But if you think about it, we already put needles into bones and joints all the time. We do it for hematoma blocks of the wrist. We do it to aspirate knee joints. We do it for intraarticular lidocaine injections for shoulder reductions. We even put spinal needles into people's spinal canals, right where their central nervous system is. And... I don't really see how this technique is going to be any more dangerous. Shut up already! Remember, it's not that uncommon in orthopedics to put a bolt with threads on it through a bone after a femur fracture and leave it in there for days and days. What about the risk of causing a compartment syndrome by injecting that small extra volume into the fracture area? Hey guys, call me! Well, it's worth thinking about. I certainly think it's unlikely, and uh, it may add a few percentage points of risk. But as with all things in femur fractures, you must consider what is lowest risk for your patient 
at a given time. If you can give them narcotics and control their pain, great. But if they're not breathing well and by giving them narcotics you're going to knock down the respiratory drive and put them in danger, you need to think about something else. Remember, if a procedure might have a complication, but your patient is dying now, that procedure might be worth it.